Hello and welcome. Next to me here, you can see Paul, my friend Paul. Now you've seen Paul on some films where we've looked at you, the Fuji uh, mirrorless cameras, the uh, XH1. XH1, and we looked at it against the Nikon. Uh, but he found me last night and said, I bought a new camera. <laughs> and do you know what? Do you remember me saying he was a Nikon man for years and years and years? This guy was a Nikon man and he bought Fuji and that absolutely blew me away. I couldn't believe that he'd gone <laughs> Fuji. But I think he might be back, back in the Nikon fold because I know he's bought a camera. I know you've been looking for something mm. sort of smaller and easier to handle. Yeah. Um, Paul's into aviation, so, so a zoom lens is um, a big part of your kit. Am I, am I, is it mirrorless? It's a Z6, it's, isn't it? I know, no. I know, I know, I know what you're going to get out. It's going to be a Z6 Mark II. It's not. II. It's not. No. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. What is it? Nikon. A Sony. A Sony! It's a Sony. Oh my God. I don't believe it. That Sony is... RX10 Mark IV. I can't believe. First of all, I can't believe that you went to Fuji from Nikon because you were just Nikon through and through. But now you've gone to Sony. Why? Basically, I wanted something to replace the Fuji 100-400, to which is a fantastic lens, but I can't hold it anymore. Is it that heavy? It's very heavy. Is it? In How fact, big is it kind of? It's about, whoops. No. About like that. Really? Yeah. That's like a 300, yeah. two, 28. It is a lens. big, heavy lens. It's a wonderful lens. So, but you need a tripod for it. I mean, or a monopod or at something. At least, even with a monopod, I'm uncertain. Right. That's okay. It. So basically, so, well, this isn't. This is. This clearly is not a 400 mil lens. What's this? It's a 600. What? <laughs> 24 to 600 in 35 mil equivalent. <laughs> Very sonar. This. It's as light as a feather. And he reckons it's a 600mm lens. I mean, look at it. How can that be a 600mm lens? It's yeah. like a mirror. This is a bridge camera, right? I'm, yes. I'm right. Yeah. yeah. So, a bridge cameras are cameras that kind of bridge that gap. Originally, they bridged the gap between compact cameras and DSLRs. Mm -hmm. And then we had, uh, mi we've got mirrorless cameras. And what they are, uh, are they're like DSLRs. They've got interchangeable lenses. But... Um, they they uh, are much lighter because they don't have the mirror and the prism inside. They haven't. They don't have the big prism inside. They have an electronic viewfinder, um, so they're smaller and lighter. But you've still got that interchangeable lens, so you can still change lens from a wide to a telephoto to to a, you know a zoom or, or whatever. But then you've got bridge cameras. Now bridge cameras, they're allegedly a bit bigger than mirrorless cameras, but this mm -hmm. isn't. This is this is this is as light as the uh, yeah. the, 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 the Z6, isn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, but can you see how they're all moulded? They're all moulded into one. This lens isn't interchangeable. You can't put a different lens on it. You're stuck with this, which is a Vario Sonar. Oh, so this is a Zeiss lens. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Fuji put a Zeiss lens on this, yeah. and not just any old Zeiss lens. No. So, so it's a T-Star lens? Yes. Wow, that is, that's an impressive piece of glass on the front of there. And it's 600 mil, you say? That, it is, that, yeah. But what's, what about the 35 mil equivalent? What would that be in 35 mil? Well, that's, that is the 35 equivalent, 600 mil. What? So it's a 24 mil wide angle to... So what, what's to, that, F4, 24 mil F4? 2.4. 2.4? At the short end. So it's wider than and my Nikon. F4 at 600. F4 at 600. 600. It's just lost that little tiny bit of light mm. all the way to 600. Yeah. I, I'm having difficulty getting my head around this. This is... Physics doesn't work this way. <laughs> <laughs> physics doesn't work like that. So we've got a 24mm wide angle at mm -hmm. 2.4 yeah. going to... Mega zoomed in, electronic zoom up, I presume. It's, it's not, op it's not it's, all, it's optical zoom. It's all, it's all optical. All optical. It's all glass. What yeah, are the elements yeah. in it? 18. 18 elements. Oh, there's Zeiss. Look there. Yeah. It is a Zeiss lens. Vario Sonar T Star lens. It's got how many elements? 18. What? That is some, <laughs> that is some serious lens making. Sony, Zeiss. We're impressed. <laughs> 
What are the pictures like? What do you think of the pictures? I'm very impressed. Yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah. Um, You've only just got this. You took it I've out I've only had it, yeah, I've had it just over a day. Yeah. Um, and, and you went out? And I used it in um, drizzly conditions at okay. the airport. Okay. But I was amazed what Tell it did. Tell us about some of the pictures. Uh, well, I was uh, basically trying to get some pictures of helicopters. Yes, there was quite a lot of helicopter flying that morning, including okay. two Airbus helicopters that came in. Okay. Uh, and how did you get? Well, they were runaway, presumably. Y yeah, well, at 600 mil, fantastic shots of them um, tearing across the airfield. So it did exactly what I wanted it to do. So what it will be like on a nice day. Well, Paul, I think that lens did really well at 600 mil. Look at those, they're really sharp. And this is a dull, dull day. What will they look like on a bright day? Well, I can't give you any more light, but I can give you an idea playing with Photoshop. Let's have a quick look. Oh, that's a lovely shot. Look at that. Doesn't that lift the picture? Uh, blue sky. Oh, everybody loves it. And it's great for aviation photography. But that's a nice, crisp lens. Now, take a look at that shot in aviation terms. Look at that rotor blade on the left as it's banking into the turn and it's creating lift. It's really bending up. It looks like a, a tip of a ski. Look, that's amazing. We need It'll be nice incredible. <laughs> Okay, so, 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 let's, so let's have a look. The first thing, I'm holding this camera now. Yeah. Um, I'll turn it off for a second so that we've got some batteries left to take some cameras mm. in a minute, which I'm very, take some cameras, to take, take some, some pictures. pictures in a minute. Uh, I'm very excited about that. Electronic viewfinder. Mm. And um, the first thing I notice when you hold this, and now I did a review on the uh, Nikon Z6 uh, Mark II. Uh, and what I, what I liked about that was actually with the um, FTZ adapter, it felt really comfy in the hand. It got a big flat area where the adapter went here and you could hold it and it felt really comfortable and flat on, on the hand. Because with mirrorless cameras, I can't help thinking that you're, you're kind of holding the lens more than you're holding the body. There's no weight in the body. Um, the weight really is in the lens. And, and, and so to have that big flat plate there was really, really nice. And I actually preferred that. And putting this in my hand now, you can see it's got that big piece of glass here, 18 elements, you know, all in here. That's the heavy bit. It's going to be front heavy. So you actually hold it there. And they've put these very tactile barrels here. Yeah. Look, I take it that's focusing. Focusing. Uh, that's zoom. zoom. And we've got a, a manual aperture ring aperture there. Ring. Which is really nice, isn't it? A yep. nice big chunky aperture ring from 2.4 all the way to 16 there. Yes. It feels really nicely molded in it your does. hand, it's doesn't nice. it? Yeah. Uh, there's a it's real fixed. balance to, yeah. to, to, to this camera. Yes. Electronic viewfinder, so uh, when you turn the camera on, we'll have a picture on the back here. Yep. And then when you put your eye up to here, that's the right. sensor picks it up and turns the screen off. It does. To, yep. And the beauty of that, the same as mirrorless cameras, and, uh, uh, you know, okay, you're not seeing exactly the same real-time picture that you do with a mirror, and that is something that takes some getting used to. But mm. I think when you have got used to it, both my, um, my shooting partner, Stuart, and Paul, uh, uh, you know, both said, you know, when you go on to manual, or when you're using the EV correction here, you're seeing it real time on the yes. back of the camera, in the viewfinder or on the screen. You see those changes real time, which means mm. you're taking a lot less pictures because you can get exposure bang That's true. on. Yes. Absolutely yeah, bang it's on. It's very useful. It's nice to know exactly what you are shooting. So, tell me, tell me about what you've been shooting. Uh, program, aperture? Well, I've tried all the different modes. Yeah. Uh, I usually shoot aperture priority. Uh, and leave the shutter speed to sort itself out. Uh, but I, I, I tried everything. On, on the helicopters, mm -hmm. I, I like to blur the blades. Uh, so, yeah. I've seen yeah. those shots of helicopters. <laughs> you know those shots of helicopters where the blades are just absolutely static and it looks like they're... In fact, have you seen the videos? <laughs> I know. There's, there's videos online on YouTube it, they, where, where they get the shutter speed slightly wrong and, yeah. and the blade isn't turning, it's just static and yet the helicopter's in the air. And they look terrible. <laughs> 
<laughs> or wonderful, <laughs> depending on the effect. You, yeah. If you're David Blaine, you probably think that's fantastic. Look, yeah. I've made this helicopter hover. So I set it on a 250, which what I normally use for piston aircraft. Mm. That was pushing it a bit at 600 mil. Yeah. Uh, but it worked. <laughs> and it works even better if you do a bit of Photoshop on it. Look at that. Summer trees, blue sky, landing lights. Oh, I'm getting carried away. On with the show. Okay. So I got the blurred blades, sharp helicopter, fine. So you can, can you see yourself taking the Fujis out to an air show? Probably not. And I'm not surprised you'd want this camera at an air show because you've got a nice wide angle and then you can zoom in to 300 mil and then zoom in again to 600 mil. Madness. I, I, I'm, I'm going to stay with Fuji. You keep I love, with Fuji. Oh yeah. I love Fuji and what they do, uh, but this is a different... It's that Velvia simulator, uh, well, the yeah, Somebody yeah. else was talking about the Chrome on, online the other day and, yeah. uh, and, and, and uh, you were talking and, and about it in course the buildings. I've, yeah, of course, and I've got the Zeiss lenses for the Fuji, Yeah. so it'll match with the colour. So where do you see this fitting in? Air shows, uh, reenactments, which I do quite a bit of. Uh, travel maybe and just basic travel if I don't want to use anything you know just take a large outfit just put that in the car yeah it's very light I mean considering yeah. I mean you know it, it, it's heavier than a mirrorless but then again you know it's got an awful lot of glass in it, there it has um, when you come out to the 600 mil end uh, let's uh, let's have a go with that okay So at 600 mil, yeah. that is the kind of length you're looking at. So, you know, not insubstantial, but, but nevertheless still, mm. you know, a 600 mil. F4 Especially at F4, yeah. yeah. So it is actually faster than the Fuji lens Yeah. at that equivalent focal length. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's very impressive. Very impressive. It feels good. It's nice and bright. Viewfinder is uh, is nice and bright. And uh, have you found the results zoomed right the way in? Fine. Yeah, can't find any fault at all. Um, and and the the close focus is incredible. What what do you mean? I mean at the short end, it's basically one inch from the front what? element. And no yeah, and at six hundred mil, uh, I can't. It's, it's just over two An feet. Inch. Yeah. All right, there is a tree with that white leaves. I've taken a picture of it. Right. I am going to go to one inch away from that yeah. and take a picture. Yeah, and try a close-up. There's no way that's going to work. An yeah. inch? Yeah. Don't buy it. Let's have a go. <laughs> right. Wow. <laughs> Do you know what? I actually had to ask Paul to come out because it's a nice new camera and I was so close to that leaf then yeah. that I thought it was actually touching the lens yep. and you reckon I was half a centimetre away. Just fractional. <laughs> and it was yeah. focusing. I, yeah. can't, I can't believe that. It, it focuses uh, closer at the 600 mil end than it does at the 250 mil. Really? It's obviously an op optical thing that can't be but right. that means it's 600 on that a tripod right. yeah so this is my carpet here right in front yeah. of me and you can just see the, the, the tripod there yeah right 600 mil yeah all the way into that carpet there's no way that it can focus in this room from 600 mil i've just taken a picture <laughs> i've just taken a picture of the carpet at 600 mil yeah that's bonkers Let's get it on the screen. Yeah. You'll be surprised. I am surprised. Look at it. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So, hang on. I'm, I, what's not to like about this camera at the moment? So, we're talking about a camera that is 24mm to 600 Well, that's mm -hmm. just about everything you ever yeah. need. Yeah, 99%. Uh, chip size. It's called a one-inch sensor. Ah, there has to be. There had to be a compromise somewhere. Yeah, it's didn't not. There? It's not a big APS or full-frame sensor. Ah, That's the right. way they do it. Okay. 
So, so yeah. that's why it can give us that magnification. Yeah. So, so it's 20. So the pictures picture. are tiny. Yeah. But it is a super sensor. Yeah. It's got everything that. So uh, how big are the pictures when you when you open them up? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll have to I haven't studied it. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to open All open the picture up and have a look at how, how big that JPEG is. So we found the Achilles heel, this tiny sensor. It's not going to be any good. It's not going to be big enough, is it? So here's a picture looking through a window. Let's pick a little bit of detail in that garden. Let's pick, well, just over here, there's a little foxglove just hiding in these plants over here. It's probably too small to see. Um, but we'll take a picture now, zoomed in through the double glazed window. So that's going to affect the optics, isn't it? And we'll see how big the image is. Wow. Uh, wow. Now that, I am gobsmacked at. How big is it? Well, I'm Photoshop. It's 57 meg. What? That doesn't make sense. How can... What have they done to this chip? Paul, you are right. It is a super chip because it may be the size of a grain of rice, but it's giving us 57 mig pictures and they look like this. I don't understand. How, how big does it compare to sort of an APS, the Fuji APS? Well, it's not as, as uh, big as those are, but uh, it still looks fantastically sharp on the screen. And how sharp, uh, not sharp, how big the pictures need to be? Because we've been talking about yeah. this quite recently, haven't we? You know, with, with the Fuji Super, what is it, the, uh, is it the GFX? GFX 100S. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah, which has got sort of yeah. 100 megapixel. Yeah, 102 meg. 102 megapixel That's right. chips and and people are saying why would you need that this the, you know it's a it, law it, of dimension yeah, returns it depends, isn't it it depends how big you want your prints really but i should say that will do an, a bitingly sharp a3 without any problem at all and how big do you need them to be mm. and certainly if you're looking on screens at them you know I've got a picture at the moment uh, in Dudley um, by the Black Country Museum. Yeah. And uh, it's a big, at the side of the road. On billboard. The big bo billboard, huge, great billboard. And the whole thing is a picture. Yeah. It's two children um, uh, laughing mm. and uh, eating ice cream and saying, you know, come yeah. and visit the castle. I took that on my D3S. That's a there 16 megapixel yeah. camera. And this is a, how many megapixels? 20. 20 megapixels. So this is still bigger than a yeah. D3S sensor. Yeah. And I had that picture up on a billboard. How big do they need to be? Well, that's true. Ask. Yeah, with modern technology. Yeah, absolutely. They can perform yeah, and interpolation miracles. now and, and, and whatnot. Yeah. So, I mean, it's gonna video. Does it, it obviously does a bit of video, is it any? It, yeah, I've never tried video because I don't do video, but uh, apparently the video is excellent as well. What up to 4K. Oh, there's some chaffinches just, uh, just landed on that. Here, take a picture of those chaffinches. How to move it. I think they're chaffinches. I'm no ornithologist. They might be something completely different. Please don't write in. Uh, just grab a picture of them. Got it. Just a quick reminder. This is where we're sitting. This is the uh, bird feeder. We're shooting through double glazing. And here's the image. Look at that. 600 mil zoomed in a pair of not chaffinches i've had a look in the book they're goldfinches everybody knows that i'm impressed i mean mm. it's sort of got everything hasn't it yeah i mean let me just let me just turn that um this screen around and do that vlog again Oh, no, 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 no. It doesn't turn, does it? No. Oh, look. Sony, no, you, you let yourself it. down. You Why can't... do you do this <laughs> in modern cameras when everybody is vlogging and everybody... Why? Why on earth is that not hinged on the corner yeah. to turn around so that we could... This, this camera would have absolutely everything and you've left something mm. really simple out at the end. Everybody wants that. Why didn't you do it? God. Oh.
It's no problem to me. Well, no, you don't. You if don't I don't problem. do it. <laughs> I do YouTube and it would be good. Do yeah. you know what? I was just thinking, this camera has got absolutely everything a YouTuber would possibly yeah. want. It's got great light capability. It's got a lovely wide lens. It gives you ridiculous zoom capabilities. Mm -hmm. It's got video and, it ju and they put a screen on which makes it absolutely useless <laughs> for YouTubers. Why, yeah. why wouldn't you... Put a screen on that, flipped around. You, you're gonna, you're gonna have to do something about that. I know it's not a firmware update, but there has to be a, the yeah. one that comes after this Sony. The Mark please, Five. The Mark Five. <laughs> this is the Mark Four, then, yeah. It is. Please. Oh, we haven't said what the model it is. It's a uh, Sony RX10. RX10 Mark yeah. Four. And uh, why they didn't put that on? It's a bit of an oversight. I suppose it is really. But, uh, I mean, really, for what it would have yeah, cost them to put that on, yeah. I, I would have, I would have hoped it would have had that. It would have had a bit of something for everyone. Um, what's it like at higher ISOs? Well, I haven't pushed it too far, but I believe it's it's pretty good. Okay, so well, we'll I, take a picture now at uh, sixteen hundred. Yeah, and, um, and uh, we'll put that on screen. Let's start with something down here at about 400. Uh, that looks quite nice, a little bit of uh, contrast in there. Now, uh, let's push it up to 1200, 1600 even. Now here's a wide shot, and as you can see, the contrast is starting to up just that little bit. Um, but it's not uncontrollable. Um, but up in this top left-hand corner, there are some little flowers by that shed. So let's 600 mil, on the uh, 1600, bang, zoomed in. That's not bad, is it? A uh, little, little bit more contrast, but I have to say, not really too much noticeable noise. Not for such a small little sensor. That's very, very impressive. Let's have a look. Let's bang it way up now. And yeah, you can see a little bit of noise coming in there now over the 3.2, um, but uh, you'd expect that. Oh, I wish, really wish they'd um, not put a fixed sort of screen on that uh, because it got pretty much everything else. The the movie, hang on, yeah, we're shooting at fifty frames. Yeah, nine hundred. It doesn't do yeah, nine hundred frames. It does, yeah. What? It does super slow motion. It does nine hundred frames a second video. How over? I believe. I think it's near near enough to a thousand. That's ridiculous. That's like, it isn't something I've looked at. But <laughs> that's like super slow-mo, so you it can is, like get yeah. insect wings and mm. beating really slowly. Yeah. That's incredible. I really like this camera. I love how it feels. Um, I'm liking the pictures that are coming off it. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that you've got manual aperture. You know how like buttons and dials on cameras, they, they don't go wrong so much as motors and that's clutches. It. Yeah, that's true. Um, I love the fact that you've got the big manual aperture ring. Yeah. I love the fact that you can zoom manually. Yeah. Uh, I love the fact that it's got a nice big AV ring there yeah. to plus three and plus minus. Uh, I like all that. I just the screen. Oh. If I had the screen, <laughs> do you know what? If that screen flipped up, I'd buy this tomorrow. We'd have to wait for the Mark V. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if there is going to be a Mark V. You know what, it's a great camera, uh, a great piece of kit, and an incredible yeah. lens. Uh, uh, let's have a look at some of the uh, the pictures. That, uh, it's a dull day today, by the way. Paul's come over. We were mm. hoping to go out somewhere, but it's drizzly and mizzling, and he's got a new camera, and who wants to get a new camera with? Well, that's true. But it is dustproof <laughs> and waterproof. It is, yeah. Well, yeah, let's say it's damp-proof, so over Zoom, that's pretty good. Damp-proof, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's an interesting <laughs> phrase, isn't it? Damp-proof. Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether that where that stands on weatherproof. You've but, got waterproof, which yeah. is, you know, you're absolutely, uh, you absolutely, you know, cameras that you can dunk underwater. Then you've got, um, you know, weatherproof. <laughs> then you've got weather resistant, damp yeah. proof. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to try it. <laughs> well, if you sent it back to Fuji because there was a problem and you uh, uh, and you said it was only damp, uh, how, yeah. how, how would they know yeah. uh, how damp it was? Yeah, it's mm. true. It pays to look after it. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, and, and Paul, yeah. You, you have always looked after your kit. Uh, yeah. This is it. If 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 this is Paul, by the way, and if he's ever selling kit, it's great kit to buy because he really <laughs> does look after his kit. Yes, uh, it's really impressive. 
Yes. It really, really is impressive. Uh, we've had the electronic viewfinder on most of the time uh, and the screen and we're still on um, pretty much full battery. Uh, there's no battery pack to go with this no at the moment and i guess no. there won't be because it's a bridge camera it's yes. not really meant no. to be um something that has loads of add-ons yeah the flash the pop-up flash yeah what's that like it's great it uh, synchronizes up to 2000 so okay. we well, can use it in sunlight should we take a little picture of the uh camera there yeah how's it cope with that oh pretty well look at that that looks fine. That looks yeah. great. Yeah. That's balanced. Done, that's nice. done a really good job. What about a speed light? Can I put my Nikon speed no, light on? No. The Sony ones are recommended. Uh, and I certainly wouldn't chance to chance any other kind. Yeah. I wouldn't chance my Fuji uh, flash on it. So. Okay. Yeah. So. But you so can ha you can have such as a microphone, a special microphone. Has it got a three and a half mil jack? Yeah, it's got jacks. Is that down the, here? No, it's on the other side. On the other side. Have a look at. Uh, okay. There's yeah, two, yeah. Okay. the top one, try the top one. Okay, so, That's we've, your got, standard. so we've got um, mini HDMI in there. Yeah. And we've got microphone and headphone, three and a half mil jacks. Yep. Great. So many, uh, like, you know, the Fuji's hadn't put those on, it was really frustrating. Um, so we can have external mics, yep. we can monitor. I think there's a large screen you can have as well that slides into um, there. I believe okay, so. monitor. Ah! I believe so. Made by them for this. I believe so, yeah. Well, I'll, that I'll, would be the flip up screen that yeah, would be. Yeah, I'm still for. learning. <laughs> if there's a screen available, and um, perhaps we need to go yeah. online now and have a look, that slides onto the hot shoe yeah. that points back towards yeah. uh, the operator, then perhaps that would get round that issue of this screen. Not flipping up because it, yeah. it would mean that you couldn't mount a microphone in there. But you know, I use um, Rode Go wireless mics, so uh, that's not really yeah. too much of a problem. I'm still learning, really. Yeah, <laughs> not I'm, having it long. You, were, you only got it yesterday, <laughs> didn't you? But I have to say, first impressions. I really like this camera. I wonder if I wonder if if pros would 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 go to something like a bridge camera because it is it's got face recognition I it has, and yeah. all the usual yeah sensors. All kind, yes all kind of things yeah the focus is extremely quick it seems to focus in really low light it, it, it seems fine yeah because i mean that that's what you'd expect poor low light performance with a smaller sensor but but it doesn't seem to it, it, it seems fine yeah I will push it more now I've learned a bit more. Yeah, well, this is, about just, a, it. Yeah, this is just an initial yeah. look at it. So um, maybe we'll revisit this uh, in a while. And maybe perhaps we could take this out and take some pictures against a traditional mm -hmm. DSLR uh, because with a full frame sensor. It would be nice to see how a full frame sensor, maybe my Nikon the eight, yeah. the 810 performs not on on high i mean it would be unfair to put it against that's true. 100 meg images that's true but um if we take this uh yeah. out and do some pictures on this and the d810 and put them side by side yeah it'll give us a real idea of, of actually what you're getting for your money with this and, that's true and talking yeah. of money of wonga what are we talking about with, <laughs> with these what well, Sony listed at 1800, yeah. but they're usually around 1500, but uh, there is a promotion on at the moment. Oh, right. So uh, took, uh, it was another 200 pound off. So you took advantage of that? So with spare battery, card, etc., and the charger, which is separate, it was just over 1400. The charger was separate? Yeah, because it too uses the USB charge normally. You plug it into the USB uh, socket. Oh, that's a bit naff. And, in, and then into your normal house plug. There is an adapter. And the cable plugs into a plug, yeah. which goes into your house socket. So it will charge from your house socket. Yeah. But the... Um, so you can pl basically plug the camera in and charge it. Yes. It's charging the battery, but via the camera's but circuit. I, I wanted a charger because of a spare battery, so I could top that up mm -hmm. with the cable. Yeah and then had the charger top the other battery okay. up. Okay. Well, it's a small gripe, but um, yeah. hang on a minute. Manual focus, continual focus, single focus, mm. A, what's that? 
automatic focus. It, uh, it focuses as a single focus camera, but if the object then starts to move, it will automatically go into that mode and stay with it. Oh, ah, again. So if you, you, yeah. know, you know what this is? This is another great vlogging um, tool. It could be, yeah. <laughs> well, it is because if I'm vlogging and I'm holding this camera out in front of me yeah. and I'm walking around and I inadvertently, and I'm in the middle of the screen like this, talking to the screen, and then I inadvertently move over here. When you're yeah. on autofocus, the autofocus is going to zap onto the background and then you're going to have to come back into the middle. Yeah. It with, does work. With that, what it's doing is it's noticing that I'm the focus, and yeah. when I move over, it'll track with me. It does work, because a helicopter I was taking a picture of, that was uh, ticking over, as I took the first picture, it started to taxi towards me, and it kept up with it, so I could do some more as it looked closer. Is the, the, the autofocus uh, any good? Great. Instant, basically. And that was in dull weather. Okay, well, I've got a surprise for you because, unless I've got duff information, while you were taking that picture, I did have a look quickly at some stats on my phone. Mm -hmm. And the autofocus on this camera is the fastest on the market, according to the website I looked at. I'm not surprised. It's autofocus is in 0 0.003 of a second. It does seem instant. <laughs> it's, it's there as so soon as you touch it. It's made for video, that is. I mean, you know, yeah. that kind of autofocus on, on, on video would be phenomenal. I just need the, uh, the, the vlogging screen. Because yeah. it just seems to me that it's absolutely perfect. But why wouldn't they've got so much in here yeah. for, for, for shooting movies and vlogging? And, and I know it's not why people are going to buy this camera. You know, this, this isn't its market. It's no. a photographer's it's camera. It's a photographer's camera. Isn't it? But, you yeah. know, when you've got all that stuff in there for, for movies, for, yeah. for video, I still can't really understand why well, they're selling you a separate screen to go on top. Why they don't just flip that screen around. Maybe yeah. they just couldn't fit it in. Maybe. With all the don't 18 know. elements and the glass. <laughs> Next time. Yeah, but... Uh, Let's, let's, uh, let's get over to some pictures. Let's just have a look at um, what your £1,400 oh, <laughs> yes. is giving you on this camera. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so here's the bit that we all want to see. The comparison of this Sony against a, uh, a full frame camera. In this case, a Nikon D810. So here we've got the same image taken twice, one with the Sony and its tiny, tiny sensor, and one with a Nikon D810 and a full frame sensor. You can see the Nikon is below, and you can see the Fuji's got more contrast. Uh, and the uh, Nikon is clearly grabbing lots more detail, lots more in the shadows as well. But how much more is it giving you um, for the expense of a full frame camera compared to the Sony and the usability of that fantastic, fantastic focal range of 24 mil to, to 600. I don't know, let's have a look at another image. Ah, a rose by any other name, <laughs> look at that. That's a, a difficult one, isn't it? I mean, they've both done a really great job of photographing the rose with the water droplets. They're both crisp. Uh, the, uh, the, the full frame, the Nikon, has definitely given more differential focusing or, or bokeh effect. Um, the smaller sensor of the, uh, of the Sony hasn't, uh, hasn't managed uh, quite so much of that but then again you know as a 600 mil you could take three steps backwards and then zoom in with the 600 mil and create that effect it's it's difficult there's a huge price difference here that is a uh, that that full frame camera you know is is thousands of pounds worth of camera with you know a, a, a 1500 pound lens on so uh, a really really big difference in price here are two shots of water lilies and it's hard to pick between them. I mean, the uh, 
the nick on there at the bottom um it seems to just have better lighting i think the sun has just come out and there's a highlight in those water droplets that's not to say it's a better camera it just meant the sun came out for a second on that picture i don't think there's that much to choose between them yes the nikon is crisper yes it's got more detail uh but uh it's an awful lot of money to pay for that and of course the sony has got another trick up its sleeve because boom and you're out to 24 mil and okay yes with the nikon's a very expensive lens on that can come out to 24 mil as well so the sony goes one better and pow, 600 mil straight in okay we haven't got much depth of field with this at the moment with no flash on but hey that is something the nikon just can't do i really would like to spend more time with the sony because it is such good fun and it is just physics logic defying to um uh, be able to zoom in so much with such a small camera so uh, just uh to finish off here's a garden shot and i'm going to just have a look at a few things in the garden and zoom in and just have a bit of fun with it let's start with these roses right close in bang that's a lovely little picture isn't it it's done a good job of that so what else uh, oh that spiky little plant in the middle of the garden oh i like that what else uh, that plant that's flowering next to it some white flowers yeah nice bit of differential focusing and and uh, what about the pine tree in the middle yeah it can capture that detail too there's nothing you can't do ah little magpies just gone by there there they are a pair of magpies <laughs> making mischief all under the watchful eye of somebody in that tree yeah keeping his head down don't blame you <laughs> this is a great camera you could have such a lot of fun with this camera and for that price it's a steal